Okay, so hi everyone. Today we are going to talk about something that uh, I did recently. So um, I've been invited to talk about platform engineering in a conference, DTX in London, and I prepared the talk, 25 minutes to talk about the importance of platform engineering in uh, driving cultural changes in during digital transformations. And I shared what is my recipe or at least what I'm trying to do. And I have to say that this resonated very well with lots of people. So I received a number of questions at the end. And in addition, many of the participants to the conference also published on LinkedIn and they received additional questions online. So I decided because the, at the conference, the video wasn't recorded. So I decided to record this um, short video where I summarize what I have I've been talking about and uh, hopefully you find that useful. Okay, so first of all, the talk was about driving cultural change using platform engineering in digital transformations. And the way I started the talk was mainly starting from my career. And it was a little bit of a journey that from my point of view is the journey of software engineering, but that obviously reflected and was biased by my own experiences. So I started as a individual contributor on a backend team. I started developing C++ for a little bit and then Java. And from Java, I moved to kind of enterprise Java initially from that to a microservices architecture and um, most of my career has been around the Spring, Spring Boot, so I have that experience as a developer. But after a few years, I started being interested in the way the platform was enabling developers to deliver faster or to have less pain during their daily activities. And that's why I got interested in platform and trying to focus on how to make developers happy and eventually be able to go back to a perfect world where I can do my Java coding because that's still my passion. And I'm still on that journey trying to make the best platform, the perfect platform. And when I transition from uh, application development to platform development, I learned a lot about continuous delivery. If we do a step back and we talk about continuous delivery, we can say that in continuous delivery, we if I have to summarize in the principles of continuous delivery, three come to mind. One is automated build and tests. Uh, the other one is frequent and small deployments. And finally, continuous feedback. So if you have these three elements, you can say that you have a, a good continuous delivery uh, approach. But one thing that is a, a strong requirement for continuous delivery is having cross-functional collaboration or even better cross-functional teams. So I think this, after a while, after trying to iterate with continuous delivery, became one of the requirements. And that's why we and introduced the term DevOps. So because the goal was to have a cross-functional collaboration, then we thought to put together development knowledge with operation knowledge and try to have something that can collaborate in a, with a simplified feedback loop, right? So having these people in the same team. And by combining Dev and Ops, we ended up with DevOps, which was the perfect thing, maybe, because I think uh, there was a little bit of confusion with the new term and the recruiting industry started to define DevOps as a role instead of a culture. And what happened is that many people started replacing their uh, titles on the CVs by marketing themselves as DevOps. So that confusion led, instead of removing silos, um, led us to have a third silo. So we ended up with Dev, DevOps and Ops. And obviously is the opposite of what we wanted to achieve. But obviously this is not necessarily true. There are a number of organizations that have implemented DevOps in the best way. So they introduced DevOps as a chain, cultural change in the organization. They have DevOps as a culture, not as a role. But I want to go a little bit deeper on that side because if DevOps with the cloud technologies was possible a few years ago, I think today the mantra, you build it, you run it, is not easily achievable and sometimes is uh, extremely expensive. So we, we should try to optimize. Why I think it's not possible? Because one, Cloud providers have introduced so many services and they keep changing them, keep upgrading, adding new features, new functionalities, new concepts. 
that is very hard for a single engineer to be on top of everything, application development and also cloud development and infrastructure development. That is the first reason why, but in, in, there are also additional reasons, especially if you're working in industries that are uh, regulated, for example, if you're working in fine, and by the way, many industries are regulated. My experience is mainly in uh, finance, so I will give you examples related to that. But if you're working in finance, you need to have um, follow a to regulation and that regulation generally is there is one team inside the, the organization that does compliance and verifies that everything is, fol is following the recommendations and the um, uh, rules and when you have a, a large organization this gets even harder because that team cannot possibly support every single application team that is adopting you build it you're running so this is moving us now towards the platform engineering so what is platform engineering? Platform engineering is another way, in my opinion, to describe continuous delivery. So we are still talking about continuous delivery, automating stuff and uh, making sure we have a sustainable way of delivering software. And if you look at the Agile Manifesto, the sustainability is one of the key principles of that, right? And um, for platform engineering, there is one definition that I like and uh, it's this one. Platform engineering is the discipline of designing and building self-service capabilities to minimize cognitive load for developers and to enable fast flow software delivery. The reason why I think this is a really good definition is because one is focusing on the cognitive load and the minimization of cognitive load for developers and also fast flow software delivery, which is a way to summarize continuous delivery. So, but the, as, I, as I mentioned during the talk, this talk is about cultural change and so far we have been just talking about continuous delivery DevOps and platform engineering. But what I want to do now is share my personal recipe uh, on how to use platform engineering, how to implement platform engineering first and how to use it for uh, driving a cultural change. So the principles are three. So the first one is platform as a product for developers. The second one is hiring the right profiles. And the third one, design a community driven platform. So let's start one by one. Platform as a product for developers. So I'm gonna start this with uh, an analogy. The cake mix that you can find at the supermarket originally were not that popular and people didn't really like them and everything changed after a while. So in the cake mix, um, if you never used one, um, Originally, you had all the ingredients all together. You just had to add water and then put them inside the oven, wait 20 minutes and get your cake out. After a while, what they realized is that by removing some essential ingredients, they started to get more sales. And one of the reasons um, was because people started to feel more involved with the process. So simply removing things like eggs or butter or milk, it was giving a little bit more um, a feeling of involvement, being part of the process to the actual bakers, right? So whenever you want to bake something, if you, you can simply buy if you don't want to get involved with the process, but the cake mix got way more successful when they started doing this because people started to feel owning what they were doing. So feeling involved is one of the, of, of the main reasons. So I think a similar concept should be applying to platform engineering. Designing a super shiny platform that is a click ops based platform or requires a very little involvement from developers is taking away most of the fun from developers. So one suggestion is if you're designing a platform as a product, Make sure it's for developers, understand what developers like to do. They like to code, they like to solve problems, they like to combine solutions. Don't provide a solution that makes developers feeling uh, not part of the process, not um, part of the, of the actual solution. So that's the first one. Make sure developers can contribute by adding the key ingredients, right? So the second ingredient of my recipe instead is hiring the right profiles. What do I mean hiring the right profiles? There is not a specific type of profile that you want, but you want a good mix of profiles. So there is not necessarily one type of platform engineer, but there are people with different experiences. Why you need a variety of people with a variety of experiences? Because you want to support your customers and your customers are going to be front-end developers, back-end developers, uh, DBAs. So you need to have a number of people um, in your organization that can talk to them. So one gap that I generally see in the implementation of platform engineering or DevOps is that 
people try to focus only on that type of skills, so mainly infrastructure as code and cloud technologies, I think everything should start with the also application development. Obviously, you don't need just application developers with cloud and uh, infrastructure as code skills. You need to have a good mix. Most of the time, it's the missing piece in the puzzle. I see that as a missing piece because without having people that can talk to developers, understand and relate to their problems and trying to figure out what is the best solution for, for them. You don't have people that speak the same language and you will easily end up in a conversation that generally are driven by misunderstanding. The other thing is bridging the gap because having someone in your platform team that can relate to the problems of developers can easily translate them for other um, skilled engineers that you have in your platform team that not necessarily had a application development experience or background. And finally, having this type of profile will help winning developers trust and uh, respect and credibility by using comparable experiences and uh, relating to, to those experiences and providing what worked for you in the past. So the last element of uh, my recipe for driving cultural change in digital transformation is designing a community-driven platform where obviously you're going to do standard activities like a show and tell session where you show what you have developed, uh, but this is fairly standard. There are additional things you can do, like using, start introducing meetups. They can be external meetups or internal meetups. As long as you have a human contact with the application teams is, um, is good, but you should also consider a marketing strategy that is generally used in uh, SaaS products, which is DevRel. So DevRel stands for Dev Relations, and um, this is a marketing strategy that um, has been adopted um, quite a lot by all these companies that provide software as a service targeting developers. So what they do is they build a community around the product and they try to listen what are developers needs. So building an internal DevRel community is something that will probably help and facilitate lots of conversation. The last two elements of designing a community driven platform are creating a podcast, an internal podcast and adopting inner source. So these two are not always adopted or not very conventional. So I'm going to spend a little bit more time on this. And when I say podcast, it doesn't have to necessarily be a public Joe Rogan style type of podcast. Uh, you can have a camera or a, even a video call recorded, but you have people talking about interest topics. And why this is important? Because one is helping with the platform communication, right? So platform generally has many stakeholders, especially large organization. You're going to have multiple teams consuming platform in uh, uh, different ways. And you also have, it's not just application teams, but also security teams and um, compliance. So everyone is interested on what you're doing, why you're doing it and how. And using a podcast will help you minimize the number of meetings and communication lines because you can have asynchronous communication. That's one point. The other point that is more important is humanizing the platform. So platform is a, an element in your organization and humanizing the platform is going to help with the actual conversations because when people talk about people, they have a different approach. Um, and uh, that's, that's one key element. So the podcast will give a face and a voice to the actual platform and that's how people can interact. Also, the podcast can usually help platform engineering in sharing success stories from teams using the platform effectively. Now, the last element of building a community-driven platform is inner source. If you're not familiar with inner source, probably you are familiar with open source. Open source is how people share code and the solutions online and how they contribute to each other to these solutions. Inner source is very similar, except that the repos are not publicly accessible. So you have your code shared internally and there is an agreement with uh, all the teams. So you need to probably implement something called OSPO, which is the open source program office. And uh, 
that will define the rules of how inner source is adopted in the organization, what are the best practices and how to interact with the different groups, what are the rules essentially to follow. And the importance of this is one, because it's going to break the silo. And if you can look at the code, you can also change the code. And there is better understanding because there, you can have cross-pollination. You can have people from application teams looking at the code from platform and the other way around where we can help each other. And we can, if you are busy, I can try to open a pull request or merge request against your um, repo. And then we can have a review process. And then if we all like it, we accept it. Otherwise, we try to suggest improvements. And that's that's one aspect, so it's going to break the silos. The other aspect is it's going to foster innovation because leveraging diverse perspective will 100% provide a better solution instead of always using the same perspective. And finally, adopting inner source will help scaling best practices. What do we mean with that? When you adopt inner source, people tend to look at the entire code base, not just a specific repo, and they will look at how problems have been solved in other places. That will definitely make converge all the best practices and, or emerge additional new best practices. So this is very powerful in, uh, in an organization where people start to be all in sync when they write code, when they open merge requests, because they follow a pattern that uh, is part of that organization and then is part of that culture. So by looking at my channel, you may notice that I did a similar video almost one year ago where with the title, can we say that platform engineering is DevSec rel ops? So if you want to hear more, you can click on the link up here or down in the description. So the key takeaways for me on this video are let developers add the eggs, so make sure you keep the platform fun, but also challenging and not a um, click op solution. And finally, adopt inner source and marketing strategies. Hope you like this video. Let me know what you think and uh, see you in the next one. Bye.